Hello, my friends. My name is Darren Gertis. It is Tuesday, May 9th, 2024, and this is the Daily Brief. So on the battlefield, it's been pretty hot. In fact, I haven't seen cracking 1,300. I can't remember when I saw it. 1300 last time. So 1300 Russians off the battlefield, 11 tanks, 35 armored combat vehicles, 23 artillery pieces, 69 vehicles and fuel tanks. Like it's it's significant. When I look at what Andrew Perpetua has captured here, it's about 2.5 or 3 to 1 Russian losses to Ukrainian losses. So that's a good ratio. Now, um, at the same time, what Russia is doing to Ukraine off the battlefield, two Ukrainian hydroelectric power stations were completely taken out of operation due to devastating damage from Russian mass attack on May 8th. That's yesterday. And so the day before yesterday was Putin's inauguration. Yesterday, there it was an uptick. Today is uh, Russia's uh, Victory Day parade. And I'll talk about that a little bit later I'll talk about it briefly here, but I'll talk about it probably tonight in my three big stories. Um, and so I think the symbolism of this means that there's going to be bigger and bigger attacks over this kind of time. Like if you just look at Ukraine's air defense destroyed 17 out of 20 Shahi drones in Odessa oblast, just in Odessa, 17 out of 20, right? So that so it's been pretty hot all around. Um, now, when we think about the battlefield, on this is the British intelligence update. In April 2024, Russian attacks intensified in eastern Ukraine, rising 17% from March of 2024. So it's it has been an uptick. I've been telling you it's been upticking, right? Of course, more than three quarters were located in Avdika, Chazavyar, and Marinika, areas of the front line. Attacks in the vicinity of Chazavyar rose by 200% from March to April. This is almost certainly a reflection of Russia's renewed attempts to gain control of the town situated on the high ground uh, to the uh, west of Bakhmut. Now, why would they be doing that? Well, they're doing that for a couple of reasons. Here's the map first. Here's the Bakhmut, Chasavyar, here's Avdika, and Marininka. Uh, again, what were they shooting for? Well, Putin's Victory Day parade was today. And I was watching some of this with my daughter and explaining stuff to, you know, here's why they're doing what they're doing and they're trying to look tough. And notice, notice the small number of vehicles uh, comparatively to in previous times or, uh, okay, at any rate. Uh, so this I found really interesting. Who's Putin flanked by? Well, if you look at this, at the parade in Moscow, the war criminals who carried out the massacre in Bucha were seated behind Putin. That's absolutely fascinating to me that the that's who he decided to put behind him while he's speaking. All three are accused of brutal war crimes. Major Boris Duko, center in Ukraine, served as deputy commander of the 124th Independent Tank Battalion of the 76th Guards Airborne Assault Division of the Airborne forces. Military members of this division in Ukraine are accused of killing civilians during the occupation. And then afterwards, I remember when the 76 guards was, was actually given an honorary title of guards or uh, awarded or something. I can't remember what it was. Some designation of valor for having have served so remarkably in Bucha. In Bucha. Like, Okay. Uh, Jay and Kiev noticed this too. We said that there would be no Russian tanks on Red Square for May 9th this year, but we were wrong. There was one Russian tank on Russia's annual day. I saw that same thing. I put that, I got that from the TV. I was like, wow, there is a tank. How about that? There was a tank. Okay. Um, now let's turn our attention to other events. Uh, Ukraine has decided that this would be a good time to start really ramping up the hits on oil refineries and oil depots. And they did a couple days ago and then they did just here. Okay. The, this attack is part of a series of strikes on oil refineries, both in Russia and the occupied territory since the beginning of 2024. Here's the Kiev post talking about what's happened here. SBU drones hit two oil depots in Russia's Krasnodar region. The simultaneous assaults targeted the Luke Oil and Temp LLC depots located approximately two kilometers apart. The season of attacks on Russian refineries and tank farms is in full swing. I like the way that they phrase that. The SBU will continue to diminish Russia's economic and logistical capabilities for waging war. 
Seven drones attacked the depot, igniting fires that engulfed three fuel oil tanks. 62 firefighters and 20 pieces of equipment were deployed to the scene. Then, a couple days ago, on Tuesday, May 7th, Luhansk, an oil, uh, occupied city in eastern Ukraine, was hit by a missile strike causing a fire at an oil depot within the city limits. Okay, but that's not it. Russian tele telegram channels report updated information that drones hit two oil transshipment depots, which are used for supplying fuel to Russian troops in Crimea. That's different. And then we have this. Ukrainian UAVs executed a day attack against, I can't pronounce that, I'm not even going to try, refinery in this I can't pronounce it kind of region. This plant is uh, owned by Gazprom, and according to the source, the catalytic cracking unit was compromised. Now, I learn stuff as I go. I really appreciate my audience because they'll tell me things like after I talk about, well, look at this oil oil refinery that was hit and somebody will say look i work in the oil industry and see this crack over here or see see this building over here that's the important thing this has to get the oxygen or whatever to it and this is this is a catalytic whatever and this is really this shows that there's real damage <laughs> i appreciate that you guys are helping me help you and i i appreciate that another view of this a drone strike and gas problems whatever i can't pronounce in slav slavat russia 1,300 kilometers from Ukraine. Authorities report no casualties, claim operations are unaffected. Yeah. Uh, here's another video of this. This is the drone that was going there. It doesn't actually hit anything, so I can you know, show a picture of a drone in the air. Um, yeah, and where was this? <laughs> it was here. Like, here's Moscow, here's Ukraine. It's a long way. In fact, it's 1,300 kilometers from the front line, this refinery in Sa Salavat. Um, yeah, and, and then, you know, Jane Keeve had a really interesting thought. By the lack of outgoing air and anti-aircraft fire, it seems Russia had no idea that Ukraine could destroy petro refineries so far out. 1300 kilometers from Ukraine, local footage from last night. And again, I'm not showing the footage. I think he's right, but I think it's also that they don't have the anti aircraft fire or anti aircraft artillery to put around all these places. Like, there's so many places that they would have to defend that they couldn't actually do that. I'm, I'm not trying to contradict Jay and Keith. He does absolutely great work keeping us informed of what's going on, but I think there's a little bit more to that. Okay, Russian telegram channels. This is a different one. Russian telegram channels report that a seaport caught fire in Russia's Petropavlovsk Kamanchki. How, how'd I do? Tell me how I did uh, last night. The causes of the fire are not named. The fire covered an area of 2,000 meters, according to Russian emergency services. And I'm not showing the actual video. I'm just showing this. And wow, now here's the really tricky thing. We don't know if this is just a fire or if it's caused by the Ukrainians. Now, where is this? This is here on the east coast of Russia. Look at that. And I've been saying this for a while now. Like It's going to really mess with the Russian mindset when Ukraine starts hitting things all the way over here. Uh, it's <laughs> That's, that's going to be a real mind bender for them. We don't know that this was because of that, but if it was, wow. Okay. Uh, Jason J. Smart said, why are Russian oil refineries so beautiful when they're burning following attacks by drones? Hope the Russians are enjoying victory day, seeing their oil industry melt. Okay, uh, the hits keep coming for Russia, says Jay and Kiev, a Russian petroleum industry as Gazprom announces it's selling off assets to cover its worst losses in 24 years. It really has. I talked about this just the other day. This is important. Gazprom takes a $7 billion loss this year. Okay, that's, that's a real thing. Go back three days and you'll see that. Um, in other news... Former commander Valery Zaluzhny has now been appointed ambassador of Ukraine to Great Britain. He was finally released from military service and he's on his way to Great Britain if you're wondering what happened to him. And the last little bit, I'm going to end with this. This is Anton Gurashenko. Iryana is a third year student at Ivan Kozdub National Air Force University in Kharkiv. Okay, that's good. But listen to what she does in her spare time. Her brother is fighting near Kharkiv. Her stepfather is fighting in Herzan. After classes, Iryana 
and her fellow students assemble and repair drones. Over the past week alone, they have managed to send more than 100 FPVs to combat brigades. Their teachers are also involved in the process. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, thank you all for your time, the likes, the shares, the subscribes. Thank you for coming to join me on Patreon. You can join me on Patreon for free. But I also want to say thank you to those of you who are our patrons, my undergrads, my graduate students, my colleagues, and most of all, my board members. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And most of all, thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.